Okay, today we're going to go over how to reverse the pinion inside of rack and pinion style pneumatic actuator. Uh, basically, the reason you would ever need to do this is typically an actuator is mounted on a valve. The actuator's uh, in standard orientation is parallel to where the piping would be. So if you had an area where there's other piping or something else above this where this actuator won't fit the way it is, but you still want it to operate in the same exact manner, but you want it mounted 90 degrees opposite, but with the disc still closed, that's when we'll reverse the pinion inside of the actuator to accomplish a non-standard mount. Okay, next we're gonna go over real quick just um, the way this piece actually looks inside of the actuator to try to get a better idea of what we're actually trying to accomplish. This pinion is from a much larger actuator, but it's the exact same principle as the one that's in here. You can see the bottom of this pinion here. It's much smaller than the bottom of this pinion here. But basically, the position we're in right now, this flat stop is right against this screw. So whenever we go to cycle this actuator, it's going to spin 90 degrees. This is going to spin 90 degrees, so we're flat across, flat across, and this stop now hits this side. So what we're basically going to do is take this whole thing apart, mark it where it is, go back in and put it back together 90 degrees apart from what it was when we started and we'll go over all that. The first step to disassembling the actuator to reorient the pinion will be to remove all four bolts on each end cap and completely remove each red end cap from the actuator body. One thing to keep in mind when removing the red end caps is there is a small black o-ring in the end cap. Just make sure that that doesn't get lost and uh, we'll worry about properly reseating it when we reinstall the end caps but for now just make sure that that o-ring does not get lost. Once we have uh, the red end caps off the unit, the next step is going to be remove this little black plastic indicator. Um, it's just one screw on top, pretty easy to remove. You can set that off to the side. Um, and next what we're going to do is grab an Allen wrench to match the uh, screws that you have in your size actuator. And we're just going to back these straight out so they don't impede with the cam at all um, when we run these out to disassemble the actuator. Okay, once we have both travel stops backed out so they won't impede with the cam, we can just put a crescent wrench on top of the pinion. And what we're going to do now is just turn this until both pistons come right out the end caps. And another thing before you take the pinion out that you want to verify is that just the orientation it's in right now, we know that it's straight up and down and the stop on this side would be hitting this travel stop. So if we cycle at 90 degrees, the stop on this side will now be hitting when it's in an orientation this way. So you can see that this just goes back and forth. That's the 90 degrees that we're working between right there. We just want to keep an eye on that. Next, we're going to remove the pinion by loosening that snap ring and just dropping the pinion right out the bottom of the actuator. And a little trick I like to use is I have a couple pieces of metal here that um, I put on the table. So it's actually the actuator is about an inch off the table to help this process. But um, just grab your snap ring pliers, loosen the snap ring, and uh, just a little tap. Everything should fall right down through. You keep your snap ring, your washer off to the side. And uh, when you pull the pinion out, you'll have the pinion. Then you have your cam, and you should have nothing left inside the actuator at this point. Um, and here's where we're going to orient this cam on here where we need it to be. We're going to mark it, and then we're going to reassemble everything. Okay, the next step is before we put the pinion back in, um, we're going to figure out where it is. So this is the way it came out. This stop would be hitting on this side when it's in the vertical position. Cycle at 90 degrees, it's going to be horizontal when this stop hits. So we're going to be 90 degrees out from that. So we basically want to switch this. So this will be flat across when this stop is hitting, cycle at 90, and this stop will now hit while it's in the vertical position. Once we have that all lined up, little trick is just to mark it. This way when you get it inside the unit, everything lines up perfectly because this has to come off to get it inside. So then once you get this back in, line up your lines. Drop it all in. Once the lines are together, that's the most important thing. We can rotate this around 180 degrees, 360 if we need to, to get it into the position we need to. But making sure that the cam is on the pinion with the splines in the correct position is the most important thing. So make sure you lay it all out, mark it where you want it, drop it in, put the cam back on the pinion, make sure your lines match up. And from there, we're going to orient everything else and make sure it goes back together from there. Okay, now that we have the pinion and the cam marked and we... Um, reinstall that cam back on the pin pinion in the correct place. Um, we can push the pinion all the way back up the rest of the way into the actuator. 
And um, from here, what you want to do is just take a quick look inside and know that whenever the pinion is in the flat spot going right across the top of the actuator, this travel stop will be hitting. And then just eye it up to make sure that when you go 90 degrees from that position and you're straight on vertical now, that this stop will also be hitting. Once you confirm that, you know you're right in the right place as far as the orientation of setting up the actuator. Once we have the pinion inserted back up through the actuator, um, we know that the cam is oriented in the right position, so none of that's going to change anymore. So to make sure that that cam doesn't come off those teeth and this pinion doesn't accidentally fall back out the bottom of the actuator, we can reinstall that black little plastic washer, and then we're going to put the snap ring back on and put it back in this groove to hold the pinion up in place. Okay, now that we have the, the snap ring back on, we know the pinion is not going to go anywhere, it's in place. We're going to reinstall the pistons now. Um, you'll see it, it's lopsided, it has the skirt on one side. In normal rotation, um, the skirts are going to go down the left. So if this is the position that we want to be in when the pistons are together, we want to go 90 degrees out from that because when we push these in, it's going to turn the pinion to the closed position. So we want to go full open and we actually want to go past there just a hair, maybe two teeth on this pinion. So once we get to that position, we'll go ahead and line up both pistons, skirts down the left sides, and um, we'll go ahead and get them started. Don't push them all the way in, but just make sure they're in the uh, equal positions here. Okay, from here, you just wanna make sure that this hole is straight on the top on each one, and they're pretty much even. You get a little bit of pressure, but if you push equally, they should get sucked in um, right at the same area. And a quick way you can test that is just grab a screwdriver or an Allen wrench laying around, get a quick measurement and just make sure that they are exactly right because one piston could be a tooth off from the other one. So you just wanna make sure that they are 100% equal, which they are perfect. So we know that the pistons are now in good shape on the pinion. So we know that when the pistons are completely together, this should be straight across, which right now it looks like we're almost 45 degrees out from there. So what we need to do now is run these back toward the ends. And when you get to the end, instead of letting them pop all the way out, what you wanna do is stand it up on end, put some pressure on this side with your hand, and at the same time putting pressure on the bottom one. And here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this with the wrench while I push down on this. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna skip these pistons a tooth over. So we're gonna skip a couple teeth on the middle of the piston. So now we both, we got them both in the same orientation again. We know they're even. So now we're getting closer. Um, we might only be one tooth off now, but we're definitely getting a little bit closer because here is the closed position, whereas these aren't quite inside the unit yet. So we're gonna have to bump it over one more tooth. Okay, now once we bump that over a couple teeth and we know that this is now in the right position, uh, and we know that because when the pistons are fully together, this is horizontal. And when we come out here to go vertical, it stops just short of the edge. So we know that's in the correct position there. Um, and another way to verify that everything is lined up perfectly is we're going to just run these travel stops all the way back in. I've already run this one in, and this one I'm just going to finish off. And I haven't changed where these bolts were actually on the studs, so they should be the original factory settings. Um, and now what we want to do now is just rotate this with the stops in, um, and that will confirm that the cams are actually going to hit this stop and this stop when it goes back and forth and the cams aren't lost over here behind it, basically 100 degrees out. Um, so from here, we should be able to run those stops in. It's gonna hit that stop, boom, boom. It's hitting both stops, so we're in good condition. Uh, we're in good shape. All right, we're um, pretty much ready to just put the end caps on and almost be done with this. Um, we do have a sticky grease. Um, it's almost like the consistency of a wax, but this grease really helps hold these O-rings in. It's kind of sticky and it'll keep that O-ring in place until you have it sealed up against this. And I always like to just give this face, since it holds pressure um, a little clean, just to make sure there's no dust or debris on there. We'll line the end cap up, make sure that O-ring's seated properly, put all four of these bolts back in, tighten them down, do the same thing on the other side, and you're pretty much ready to go. So once the end caps are on, I mean, the last step is just to put your indicator arrow back on. And this basically just um, tells you the orientation of the disc. So when it's on the valve, we know that the flats going straight across are usually in line with the disc. Um, so here you can see, this would be a standard mount with the disc closed is how we started. Um, and what we've done is turn this so that basically now you're in the closed position in a non-standard mount. This will be perpendicular to your piping as opposed to parallel. So we basically just reverse the guts inside there 90 degrees.